we will study one dimensional oscillations. And let me just write it one dimensional oscillations. And I will solve uh, three cases. First one is the ideal oscillator. And then I will give an example uh, or two on that. So one ideal oscillator. Second one will be damped oscillator. Namely, there is a friction acting on the uh, body that is oscillating. And the third one will be the forced and forced and damped oscillations. Okay. So in each one, I will uh, explain a little bit of the theory, and then we shall solve uh, some problems. Oscillations are very important. Uh, you know, for example, it, there is the spring and the mass. Mass oscillates. There is the torsion bar and the plate. Plate uh, rotates and oscillates. But uh, the importance of the oscillations are uh, uh, due to the fact that any system that is uh, in stable equilibrium, if you uh, perturb the system a little bit away from the equilibrium, it will oscillate. That's, that, that makes the uh, study of oscillations so important because it's not only the mass and the uh, spring, as we all study in introductory physics a lot. Uh, not only such systems uh, oscillate, but buildings oscillate, bridges oscillate, molecules oscillate, atoms, nuclei oscillate. Uh, so all, any system that is, has a stable uh, equilibrium position, if you just tickle the system away from the equilibrium, it will oscillate. That makes the study of oscillations so interesting and uh, important and exciting. Of course, here we are uh, taking only simple cases as an illustration of this important topic. So I am beginning now with ideal oscillator. Why is it ideal? Because uh, it is not damped and it's not forced. Somehow it was set into motion and then it is uh, oscillating by itself and indefinitely. And uh, the, for example, if we just take the uh, spring and the mass system, if you just displace it a little bit, this is the x. So this is the zero, it comes to the position x, there is a force on it this way. Magnitude is kx, direction is minus. So it is uh, that force, which is, uh, which is, this is just the acceleration, is minus kx. This minus sign is important because it tells you that if you increase x in the positive direction, then uh, the force, which is called the restoring force, tries to bring you back to the equilibrium position. So this is the restoring force. Restoring force. <clears throat> so uh, let us solve this uh, equation. x dot plus k over m x is equal to zero, we shall call this, you see, the, this is the second derivative of x. By the way, by dot we mean uh, d by dt. Okay, this is the second derivative, so x divided by uh, time square as far as uh, dimension is concerned. So this is also 
x is here, so this is 1 over time square. So we shall call this omega 0 square is k over n. And the solution of this thing is x equals a cosine omega 0 t plus b sine omega 0 t. This is a second order differential equation, second derivative, and it has two independent solutions, cosine omega 0 t and sine omega 0 t. We can immediately see that they satisfy the equation. The second derivative gives the same function with a minus sign with the multiplicative constant omega 0 square. So here you get minus omega 0 square. Here you get plus omega 0 square. It is 0. Same thing with the uh, sign. Let us relate it to the initial conditions. Let's say x t equals 0 is x 0. So this is, if you put time equals 0, this is simply a. And uh, v0, so v of t is equal to minus omega 0 a sine omega 0 t plus omega 0 b cosine omega 0 t. Therefore, v at time 0 is v0 that's equal to omega 0 b. Therefore, b is equal to v0 over omega 0. So we can write the equation for x now. We can put the values of a and b inside. That is x0 cosine omega 0 t plus v0 over omega 0 sine omega 0 t. So this is the uh, solution. If you are given the uh, initial conditions, x0, v0, you simply plug them in and uh, you have the full uh, solution. Now, uh, the ideal oscillator is oscillating. Of course, uh, it has energy and uh, if it's ideal, if it keeps on uh, uh, oscillating, then it must not lose energy. Let's see that that's the case. I'm erasing this. V is this. All right, let's look at the energy. Let me multiply uh, uh, this equation by mx dot times this equation, x double dot plus k over m, x equals 0. So this is d by dt, 1 half mx dot square plus 1 half kx square, that's equal to 0. Let's do the derivative. It is 2, 2 nux that 2, m, x dot and its derivative, x dot and x double dot. Here you have 2 nux that 2 of k and uh, then uh, x, x dot, x, x dot. So you see it's the same. But uh, we, uh, this, what is this? This is simply the kinetic energy of the oscillator, kinetic energy. And this is the potential energy. So the, the whole thing is the energy. So this is d by dt. E is equal to 0. So E is a constant of the motion. Uh, so sometimes velocity is bigger than the potential energy, sometimes potential energy is bigger. So these things are changing, but the total energy remains constant. In fact, it is equal to the uh, initial energy because it's not changing. And the initial energy, we know how to write it. It is simply 1 half m v0 square plus 1 half k x0 square. So it is the sum of the initial potential energy and initial 
initial potential energy and the initial uh, kinetic energy. All right. Uh, and this is equal to one half m b square plus one half k x square. And I give you an exercise now. Just put this x in here and put this v in here and see that it is again equal to this, uh, uh, the sum is equal to this E0, the initial energy. So the energy is constant, oscillator does not, ideal oscillator does not lose energy. Now I want to discuss uh, something else. Uh, and although it is not needed so much for the uh, simple ideal oscillator, it is an essential tool to study the damped and forced oscillations. Therefore, it's a good thing to try this technique in the first, uh, for the first time with the ideal oscillator. And for this, I will use uh, complex notation. So I am raising this. We have seen that energy remained constant. Okay, so I'm raising the energies. Okay. Now, we will say that x, which is real, which is the measured physical distance from the equilibrium uh, position, we will say that this is the real part of a complex quantity x, and x will be written as x0, so a complex constant, uh, which is multiplied what is so-called a phasor. So this is cosine omega 0 t plus i times sine omega 0 t. And i is a complex constant such that i square is equal to minus 1. So uh, x0 being a complex constant, uh, complex constants have a magnitude. They are just uh, like arrows. They have a magnitude and a direction. So x0 uh, will, will have a magnitude and uh, some phase. Therefore, taking the real uh, part of x, so we are, uh, x is equal to real part of, let's write, x0 e to the i omega 0 t plus this psi. So this is real, the magnitude, and uh, the real part of this is simply the cosine part. So it is x0 cosine omega 0 t plus psi. Let us find now the relation between x0 psi and a and b, or if you wish, x0 v0. Remember, this is the v0 is the velocity at the initial instant, time equals 0, and this is the position at time equals 0. Okay. Let me just uh, expand this line. This is x0 cosine psi cosine omega 0 t plus minus. I am expanding this. x0 sine psi sine omega 0 t. And now I compare this, uh, this with this or with that. Okay. So remember, if you take this, this was A and this was B. Okay. So obviously, x0 is square root of a square plus b square and tangent psi 
is simply, if we divide that with that, that's equal to minus b over f. And we had written a and b, so it is root x0 square plus b0 square omega 0 square. This is minus b0 over omega 0 x0. So this is another way of uh, using the, uh, uh, putting the uh, solution. And it has great advantages here and even here, as we shall see in a moment. <clears throat> All right, I have to erase some parts now. Let us, uh, for example, compute one half k x zero square. What is that? Remember, x zero head square. X zero is the magnitude of the complex uh, complex uh, coefficient here. So it is one half k, and uh, x zero square was. This one, x, the square of this, okay? So it is x0 square plus v0 square or omega 0 square. Let's write it. It is 1 half k x0 square plus, remember this is at the same time m omega 0 square. So omega 0 squares cancel. So it is 1 half m v0 square. So what is this? This is simply the initial energy which was uh, uh, conserved for all times. Okay? So we can interpret now x0 as x0 is x max. It is the maximum amplitude that the oscillator uh, swings. You see, this initial uh, Displacement x0 need not be the amplitude. You can just uh, displace a little bit and give it a lot of velocity. That's not the full amplitude of the oscillation. So uh, the importance of the x0 is that it is directly related to the maximum displacement. And similarly, v0 uh, uh, v0 amplitude that's equal to v max. What is V0? Let's look at this. All right. I wrote the result uh, too quickly, perhaps. Let me just do it. The question is, what is 1 half m V0 square? And what is V0? It is the derivative x. I'm erasing it. V equals V0 e to the i omega 0 t. This is just the derivative of x, so it is i omega 0 x0 e to the i omega 0 t. So it is, it is this. So the, if you square it, it is 1 half m omega 0 square x0 square. This is k, but we just showed this is the full, uh, where is it? This is the full uh, energy, okay? This thing is the full energy, so it is E. E0 equals E. Therefore, this V0 uh, is the maximum velocity. When does that happen? When it passes through the equilibrium position, then it has the maximum velocity, okay? So V0 is just Vmax. So the importance of these uh, uh, that they are directly related to the uh, amplitude, full amplitude. I want to emphasize one more thing here. This e to the i omega 0 t, if you just look at it, let me erase this. So 
So e to the i omega zero t, it's a, is an arrow. The angle is omega zero t, and this thing rotates with uniform uh, speed, angular speed omega zero, as you see here, theta is. So the, uh, it rotates uh, uniformly. So it has a constant speed along this uh, uh, circle. But the solution is, of course, as we discussed at the beginning, is cosine or sine. So these cosine or sine solutions of the oscillations are related to the uh, uniform circular motion. Okay? Cosine solution is the projection of it on, the, uh, on this axis, which is called the real axis. And the sine solution is the projection of this thing on the y-axis or the imaginary axis. All right. Now, let me erase this whole thing. So, I emphasize again the importance of the magnitude of these coefficients. They are related to the full amplitudes. Now there's another question. Energy is constant. E of t is equal to E0 equals constant. But this is equal to the sum of uh, kinetic energy plus potential energy. And the thing is oscillating. Therefore, sometimes kinetic energy is bigger, sometimes potential energy is bigger. So kinetic energy is not constant, potential energy is not constant, they are changing. So we can ask, for example, what are their average values? So let me start with this one. What is uh, potential energy over the uh, period of the oscillation? And the period of, of the oscillation is T is 2 pi over omega 0. Let me call this T0. Now, of course, this is uh, one half k, one over t zero, from zero to t zero, dt x of t square. And remember the uh, x of t I wrote, it was a cosine omega zero t plus b sine omega zero t. Now, of course, one can square, do all these things. But you see, trigonometric functions, cosines and sines, are in some sense complicated functions. They are not e so easy. But uh, we can use the fact that uh, we can represent these solutions by, by this complex representation. And in which case, we can take the average, averages uh, very easily. This is a I want to make a, a, a remark. This is the physical uh, length, so it must be real. So we are not allowed to use complex x square, except for the averages. And here I give a, a mathematical result that we will use, but then I will give this uh, as a problem in the homework. Okay? So if a physical, is real part of A0 and uh, if B physical, it will I omega 0 T and if B physical is real part of B0 E to the I omega 0 T, they must oscillate with the same frequency. Then AP, BP is this has a very simple result. Uh, you take one half the real part of A0 complex co coefficient times B0 complex conjugate. Since it is real, I can conjugate it. This is equal to one half real part of A0 complex conjugate B0. Okay. This is a wonderful uh, relation that we shall use again and again and again in our study of the oscillations. So let me come back to here. In this case, 
potential energy over the period is one half k. Again, this one half k is due to the potential energy. Now we use this formula, so we have another one half, one half the real part of. Now look how it easy it goes. The coefficient of e to the i omega zero t is x zero. A is x zero. B is also x zero. So it is x zero times x zero star. But this is simply the absolute magnitude, which is real. Therefore, it is one half, one half k x zero square. But we just showed a uh, short while ago that this thing is the constant total energy E0. So that's equal to E0 over 2. I can now, well, promise you will remember this uh, magnificent result. I'm erasing it. We will use it all the time. Okay? Anything that multiplies e to the i omega 0 t, so we take uh, the coefficient and the other coefficient, the only uh, requirement is that both must vary with the same frequency. Okay. So this is the uh, average of the potential energy. Now, since E is kinetic energy plus potential energy, kinetic energy is equal to E minus potential energy. And if we take the averages, kinetic energy, E minus PE, energy is constant, is not changing, so it is E0. This we found as E0 over 2, that's equal to E0 over 2. So both are E0 over 2. The interesting thing is that uh, suppose you start the oscillator with some X0, V0. That means I can write the total energy like this, E0 is equal to eta times uh, kinetic energy plus 1 minus eta times potential energy. Sorry. Uh, E0, E0. So the result is E0. So eta is 1. Namely, I, uh, this, is the, this is the kinetic energy. This is the potential energy. Namely, I can start the oscillator with the same energy in a variety of ways. Uh, a little bit of kinetic energy, more potential energy, or etc. So it, I can change it in a variety of ways. This is, however, for the initial condition. For the averages, they are equal. Kinetic energy average is equal to potential energy average that's equal to E0 over 2. Okay. So the averages are constant, half the total energy, but you can start the system, uh, you know, you may start it with zero kinetic energy, all in potential, you push, pull the spring, or it was sitting at the equilibrium position, you kicked it, just gave it a, an initial velocity. But the averages don't care about the initial conditions and they're E0 over two. Okay. Now, once we learn this technique, we can uh, use it in a, for a variety of uh, expressions. We can do, uh, for example, correlation functions. Correlation functions. For example, let me compute this. X of t, x of t plus delta, where delta is a time increment. And we multiply x of t with the x uh, at t plus delta, and we uh, take the average over t0. Now, uh, this is again very easy because x of t is the real part of 
x0 e to the i omega 0 t and x t plus delta is equal to real part of x0 e to the i omega 0 t plus delta which is real part of x0 e to the i omega 0 delta times e to the i omega 0 t. So it's, if this is a, uh, this is a0, if this is b, this thing is b0. So the result is very easy. This is equal to one half the real part of x0, I am taking this coefficient, times the complex conjugate of this, x0 e to the i omega 0 delta coefficient, the complex conjugate, that's equal to one half real part of x0 square times e to the minus i omega 0 delta. This is positive and real, so it goes out. We have to take the real part of e to the minus i omega 0 delta. This is just to remind you, is cosine omega 0 delta minus i sine omega 0 delta. And therefore, the real part of it is simply that. So it is 1 half x0 square cosine omega 0 delta. That's it. Uh, if you wish, you can multiply by k and divide by k. This thing is the energy E0 over k cosine omega 0 delta. So uh, when delta is, for example, omega 0 delta is pi over 2, the result is 0. These things are not correlated. Or for delta equals 0, they are fully correlated. In fact, it's the square. So the next one, all right. These are all the results of that beautiful uh, formula. So one can uh, do them very simply. Okay, so I'm erasing this one. Let me just write the result here. That's equal to E0 over K cosine omega 0 delta. The second one is V of T, V of T plus delta. So let's compute this. X equals in the complex form X0 e to the I omega 0 T. Then V is equal to V0, sorry, uh, equals I omega 0 X0 e to the I omega 0 t, this is the V of t, and V of t plus delta is equal to I omega 0 x0 e to the I omega 0 delta times e to the I omega 0 t. So the coefficient in front of I omega 0 t is, in the first case, is this one. In the second one, it is this one. So uh, the result is equal to, remember this is an average over the peri period of the oscillation. So it is real part of i omega 0 x0 times i omega 0 x0 e to the i omega 0 delta complex conjugate, which is one half real part of i omega 0 x0 minus i, omega 0 is real, x0 complex conjugate e to the minus i omega 0 delta, i times minus i is 1, so we get out 1 half omega 0 square x0 square cosine omega 0 delta. So if I multiply by m, divide by m, I get 
E0 over M cosine omega 0 delta. In fact, uh, when delta is equal to uh, 0, we have E0 over M. So you see, uh, this was the average of 1 half M V square. You can just read off here. 1 half M E0 over M. And this is 1. So it is E0 over 2. So I didn't do the average of kinetic energy, but it simply falls down, falls up. So this is simply the kinetic energy. So one last one is, uh, so this is the second one. I will, let me erase this one. Again, let me repeat. The advantage of using this uh, phaser, this is the phaser that is moving around with constant speed, is this. This is a very simple motion on the circle. Whereas the physical solution, the real solutions, are the projections of this thing, which is the cosine or the sine. Now you can see that cosine and sine functions are not uh, as simple as the uh, uniform motion on the uh, circle. That's why it's very advantageous. The third one is x of t, v of t plus delta t0, this is one half real part of, this thing is here, x0, v has this thing, minus, I'm just copying from here, minus i omega 0, x0 star e to the minus i omega 0 delta. Let me erase our. And this is equal to 1 half. X omega 0 goes out. x0 absolute square goes out. x0 square. Then it's the real part of minus i cosine omega 0 delta minus i sine omega 0 delta. i times cosine omega 0 delta is imaginary because of this i. So its real part is 0. i times i is minus 1. Okay, minus minus is plus. i square is minus 1. So the result is equals minus 1 half omega 0 x0, let me write it like this, x0 sine omega 0 delta, or in other words, this is minus 1 half, this is the v max, maximum velocity, this is the maximum uh, amplitude, x max, sine omega 0 delta. So we can take uh, these interesting uh, uh, correlation functions. They are usually very important in electrical circuitry uh, when we have RLC circuits uh, which are themselves very good oscillators. <coughs> well, they also fall into that category, but uh, then they are in close correspondence. <coughs> 